President Trump hard at work overseas on day two of his first foreign trip as commander in chief, holding a series of meetings with Arab leaders in Saudi Arabia. Here he is with the president of Egypt, an autocratic leader who Trump today called, quote, a friend. He was also overheard complimenting his shoes. The warm vibes did not stop there. The president also dancing with his Saudi host, sword in hand. President Trump conducting some business as well while he's there, signing a 110 billion dollar arms deal with the Saudis. Trump touting the investment in American businesses and jobs. And later this morning, the main event, the president will deliver a highly anticipated speech on confronting terrorism. But there are clouds hanging over this trip. Just hours ago, the North Koreans conducting another missile launch. And of course, here at home, the ongoing questions about the federal investigation into possible collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. We do have team coverage this morning. John Carl and George Stephanopoulos are standing by, but we're going to start with ABC's Cecilia Vega, who's in Riyadh. Good morning to you, Cecilia. Paula, good morning. The big question right now here in the birthplace of Islam, will the president use a phrase that he repeated time and time again on the campaign trail, radical Islamic terrorism? But right now, aides tell us this speech that he will deliver later this morning is expected to take a different tone than we had heard from him in the past, a much softer one, spelling out is extremism in the terms of good versus evil. This morning, President Trump speaking directly to the Muslim world, hoping to find common ground. Every time a terrorist murders an innocent person and falsely invokes the name of God, it should be an insult to every person of faith. With leaders of 54 Muslim countries in attendance, the president focused on stamping out extremism, sounding nothing like candidate Trump. I think Islam hates us. This is not a battle between different faiths, different sects, or different civilizations. This is a battle between barbaric criminals who seek to obliterate human life and decent people, all in the name of religion, people that want to protect life and want to protect their religion. President Trump meeting with one Arab leader after the next. Egypt's President el-Sisi laying on the praise, saying President Trump has a unique personality that is capable of doing the impossible. It prompted laughter in the room, and the president's response? I agree. <laughs> with all that controversy back at home, President Trump looking glad to be so far away a traditional Saudi dance, typically a symbol of peace after a hard-fought war. And the men fighting with him in that battle back in Washington, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross, right here too, dancing with swords. A packed agenda, but not receiving much attention here, human rights. As a woman here in Saudi Arabia, I wouldn't even be allowed to go into this door at a McDonald's. I would have to go through this side that says family section. Completely segregated, there is a wall here that keeps the women separate from the men. While the president was in town, country star Toby Keith holding a free concert here, American flags lining the stage. In the audience, men only, women not allowed. Now, human rights groups rank Saudi Arabia among the 10 least free countries in the world. Women here are denied such basic rights as driving a car. While the Trump White House says that it does not want to lecture countries about human rights, Ivanka Trump is here today, guys, attending a forum on women's issues. She said that while there has been progress in this country, there is still much work to be done. Dan and Paula. Cecilia, thank you. Cecilia Vega leading us off this morning.